Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my briefing for Chapter 17 of the Pinkham book, uh, Django Unleashed. And Chapter 17 is called Understanding Generic Class-Based Views. And uh, this is a refactoring uh, chapter, okay? Um, because uh, up until now, uh, let's see, in the Pinkham book, uh, we have turned a lot of the view code that we have into uh, class-based uh, views. Um, we still have some uh, function-based views left. Whereas in my uh, easy university tutorial, uh, I've got you to the point where all your views are class-based. So part of what he has us uh, doing in Chapter 17 is uh, getting, um, I think, all the views up to the point where they're class-based. Uh, I don't think we have any function views left when we're done. And then the second thing he's doing is uh, he's using these uh, generic uh, class-based views because these are uh, generic uh, classes that are for uh, common use uh, cases uh, for views. So you'll be interested to know that there's one for uh, a list view. There's one for a detail view. There's one for a create view. There's one for an update view. There's one for a delete view. Um, and he uses just about all of them within the chapter. Okay. And they're a lot shorter than the uh, kind of homegrown uh, class-based uh, views that we use. Because instead of uh, subclassing view when we create uh, the view, we're going to be subclassing um, the more functional uh, superclass like list view, create view, update view. Okay, and so we're going to just have a lot less code. And the payback is that it's going to be uh, easier to write, easier to maintain. The only real cost is that uh, these um, generic class-based views uh, depend on some Django magic that has to do with how things are named like the naming of uh, parameters that we've used already. So we're going to have to change some of the names and code that we already have in order to take advantage of all the Django uh, magic. Now, the first thing that I want to do is, uh, before I show you the code that he has uh, for, uh, say, the uh, create or the update, OK? Uh, I do want to look at uh, two generic class-based views that uh, we can use uh, without even having to subclass them. And he's got them down towards the end. So I'm going to pause this. And I'm going to bring my way down. Here we go. So um, it, 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 it turns out that uh, earlier in the book, uh, we uh, put some code together to redirect um, the URL that was just the root URL, just the uh, domain name, uh, to a particular page on our site. And to do that, we created a uh, URL pattern and one uh, f easy uh, to code uh, a function based. Uh, view. Okay. Well, here's what we're going to refactor that to now. It turns out that one of these generic class-based views is called redirect view. And we can use it, use it as is. We don't have to subclass it. We just use the class as it comes. So we go to the URL pattern that picks up the root URL. And we say we want to use redirect view as view. And then we pass it the name of the pattern, in this case, blog post list, and uh, one other parameter, uh, permanent equal false. 
Okay? And that takes care of it right there. So instead of um, having to uh, hand create a view for the redirection, uh, well, we can get rid of that that we had. So we change uh, the URL, and then we can get rid of that uh, um, uh, function-based view that we had uh, redirect root because we don't need it anymore. Okay, now uh, this time through the course, we didn't do the chapter on flat pages. Okay, so at this point, um, if you're following along, we haven't, we don't have an about page. Now the about page uh, just has plain old HTML content on it. It doesn't have any truly uh, dynamic uh, content. And so in chapter 15, he gave us an implementation using uh, the Django flat pages uh, contrib uh, feature. But we didn't do it. So we don't have an about page uh, yet. And what we're going to do instead is uh, a more maintainable approach to non-dynamic uh, uh, pages, and it's uh, uh, this. We're going to create a template for the About page, and uh, it just isn't going to uh, pull data out of the context. Okay, so it's going to be uh, dynamic in, in, in a mechanical sense, in that it's going to have a template, and that template is going to execute, and it's going to dynamically put out the about page. But it's going to be static in the sense that it's not going to be filling in a bunch of uh, template variables on that uh, page because uh, it doesn't have that nature of uh, content. Okay, so... Uh, how do we get that done? Well, in the URL pattern, we have a uh, we use the generic uh, class space view template view. It's right here. Okay, as view, and we have to give it the uh, template name. Okay, this is. It, 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 the the about page, okay, and it's a template, and he's got some configuration here. He has this associated with the whole site and not just with a particular app, okay, which is why uh, we have all the details that we have here, okay, and that uh, takes care of that, and then uh, the page, well, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It looks like a template, uh, but it doesn't have uh, template variables inside that need to be resolved. Okay, so it's all pretty straightforward stuff. And then, of course, you have to go back to your uh, to your base HTML page and add the link for the About page. And that's how we get that uh, done. Okay. So those are the two easy ones. Okay. Also, he has a bunch of stuff uh, in the end of the chapter that I'm going to talk about right now. Uh, he, he, he uses uh, some of these um, generic class-based views to create... Uh, these archive uh, pages, which is kind of a list page, but not a list page per se. Okay, this is a page I, I think makes a lot of sense for a, a blog. Uh, not so much a sense in terms of a database application like we're doing in our easy university tutorial app. So the end of the chapter uh, is uh, kind of interesting. And if you're going to be constructing a blog, you're probably going to want to look at it, okay? But um, where I want to bring your attention now is to the the beginning of the chapter. And I just want to pick uh, one of the uh, generic uh, class-based 
views, uh, I'm going to pick uh, Create. And I'll show you uh, how the refactoring is uh, going to work. OK, let me pause it. OK, so here we are down. Um, and we're taking a look at the first of, of the Create uh, views that he does. And uh, he shows us that um, these um, it, it creates, uh, as they are originally implemented, um, uh, are, well, this isn't a really good view of it, but by the, the time you come to the chapter here, the create, uh, each of them uses an, an object create mix-in. And um, it, it's got a decent length of uh, code. And what happens is that we come down and we create these uh, uh, create views. Now let's, let's take a look right here. And um, here's the final version that we come up with. Okay, so if for each of the classes that we have, we have a, we have um, the name of the model class create. It's a subclass of create view, not just view. And then there's just uh, two things to configure: the form class, in which case, and it's the name of uh, the model class form, and then the model class model equal. And in this case, he's saying news link. OK, it's that much of a saving. So a big savings in terms of code. This is especially uh, uh, a big savings because we don't even have to have an object uh, create mix in because that is implicit in uh, create view. So uh, we really have a big uh, pickup on the uh, code. OK. Uh, here you can see uh, with uh, the update, you know, the updates were pretty substantial code. Here they're uh, pretty short. Okay, and that's the idea. So the payback on this is that we are refactoring the code so that our code that we write is shorter and easier to maintain. And if they're surprised, the price is that uh, we rely on some of the naming magic that's uh, kind of inherent in this uh, class infrastructure that we that we adopt when we go to uh, generic uh, class-based uh, views. So uh, that's it. Um, uh, a warning here, there's there's a lot to be done from the chapter in the Pinkham code. Um, uh, certainly, to the extent that you want to make the Pinkham code work, I recommend that you wind your repository around to the end of the chapter uh, and give it a, uh, and do uh, uh, some testing. But code-wise, uh, save yourself for the easy university tutorial because that's where I'm going to really want you to spend your time. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.